bizarre in here. You know what? That that's an improvement. It's better. That's right? an improvement. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I blocked out whatever the last time we did was. I remember it being offensive. It was yeah. not offensive at all. <laughs> it was pretty offensive rough. to our intelligence, our sense, our combined intelligence. Well, I mean, I don't deny that that probably happened. Yeah. Although I, I would say this one is is kind of close to like the weird things kind of style of like it's been weird. Yeah, but that's like an okay. Look, a little Are bit. Are you trying to but... say that I'm stealing one thing from one show that I do to another show I'm that just I give, do? I'm giving some constructive criticism. Well, I appreciate that. But hi, everybody. This is the Bizarre Briefing. Uh, yes. Our uh, May edition. Uh, that's Brant Hughes. Yep. Uh, I'm Bryce Castillo, and we're joined with John Tilton. Yo. What's up? And this is the podcast where we kind of just talk about... Life. Work. Life in, in, uh, in the new age. Welcome to the new age. Whoa. 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 <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, if you don't know, we, we are kind of the behind the scenes team of uh, Scam School and mm -hmm. uh, Behind the Scam. Scam stuff. Scam stuff. Scam School Remix. All scams. All scams. Schwid.com. Do you guys ever, uh, I hate to just burst this question in, but do you guys ever get weird things when people know you're associated with something with the word scam in it? Like, cause I get that all the time on like, I try to figure out pricing for a new product mm -hmm. or something. And they're like, scam stuff. Well, we're going to need to see your documentation <laughs> and what, who are you scamming? What's and people get like really, I don't know if you well, guys ever have that I feel experience. Like, I feel like that might be a little bit more particular to you because you're dealing with like business stuff <laughs> and money stuff. Mm. Uh, whereas I'm just like, I don't know. I make dumb videos on the internet and usually I don't even tell people that. Like <laughs> it's scam school. So I'm just like, I do a show for Discovery and people are like, oh, wow, that's really cool. You seem important. Because yeah. <laughs> um, saying more than that is yeah. over the line. That's the sure. saturation point. I mean, they get the idea. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't really think I get that either. Though, may, maybe this is related. Maybe not. I do get a lot of spam. Like I go through my spam folder, mm. and I get a lot of emails from manufacturers in China wanting to sell me fiberglass and like raw materials. Mm. And you think that's work related? I, I, I think I. I'm just saying. I think because I deal with I China a lot, and I don't get anything like that. <laughs> don't know i don't know because i don't really put my name out there very much other than like on the youtube credits i guess hmm. uh so it seems hmm. that seems that i'm just thinking you know maybe i mean there's a lot of reasons it could happen my public i have a pretty public email address i feel so today's our apocalypse edition oh my god it's pretty great we were under tornado warning mm -hmm. uh i don't think we still are are we no, we still are. At least we're on. We're definitely we're on under one flood of three warning warnings. Well. Yeah, flood, thunderstorm, tornado. At least two of the three are always in effect this yeah. weekend for us, which yeah. was great which, for me. Driving. Oh here. yeah. Yeah. Well, I I don't think any of us can complain except for <laughs> Brant, who had who probably I, the. I have oh, become true. the reckless hobo. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah, you you had some flooding, like real. Yeah. Do you have flooding pictures issues? that you can? Sure. Show? It should be said though that Bryce did drive through this to like, like yeah. That Brand seems is, that seems kind of irresponsible. Would you have driven here, Brant, if the storm had already started, and your apartment was fine? My apartment was fine, probably not. But then yeah, again, see, I don't, I I don't drive either. here very often. Anyway, really? But uh, yeah, but like we would have, like if we hadn't gone yet, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and it was storming, I would have, and I didn't know where you guys were. I would have been like, hey. I'm not going to make it because, you know, we're under like all these <laughs> blood alerts, all this stuff. Bryce <laughs> just like, shows hey, up. Like, whatever. Brad and I bad. talked earlier. We're, we're like, I assume this isn't happening because Bryce probably isn't going to be here. And then like I go to the garage and come back out and Bryce is definitely here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, but, uh, well, people are being detained out there for driving. <laughs> Have you seen the news? I didn't think it was going to be so bad hmm. uh i mean i knew that it, i knew there would be a lot of rain and i just got some new tires so i was pretty like oh, yeah. you know what i'm gonna be okay like those these are my water are tires now filled with water yeah. <laughs> uh 
but I, uh, I don't know. I wasn't so worried. I knew we were doing Cord Killers today because it's a Monday, and mm-hmm. Brian was talking about doing stand-ups, and I need stand-ups, and so even if we do them in fucking a hallway in his house or something, I need a stand-up. Sure. Um, but uh, but the potential scariness of driving through kind of kind of high waters wasn't wasn't so bad and i think in comparison to like uh fl- your flooding like your yeah. very real like flooding like how much uh, how high did it get like it looks like it's almost up to the crown molding here yeah so it got a little bit higher than that that was that was about 45 minutes Man, before it's, it's really the peak. still there yeah, uh, it just like so that that was well, a while after it came in, or was it so at, slow at, that it just crept up like that? Well, at that point, it had it it was still coming in at a pretty fast pace, but you could see like one picture before we we had uh, blocked up the door, which is where all the water was coming in from because mm-hmm. it wasn't sealed very well. Um, but if we take that away, like it floods in really fast, uh, mm-hmm. but it's just over such a wide enough area that it. You know, there's not a lot of current in there, so yeah, it it ended up getting inside the apartment. It ended see up flash getting like flood warnings still yeah. coming through. Oh jeez, uh, it ended up getting like four and a half, five inches tall, something like that. Wow. It was it was pretty tall, um, and so we spent we like I I was awake when it happened at four oh, thirty a.m. That um, uh. Can you show that? We, show? Yeah, we've got a yeah. photo of, uh, I guess, the parking lot, and it's up to like the license plate on this car here. Yeah, there were definitely some cars that got <sighs> spun around in the current. Um, oh my god! There was a car that got there. In, behind those cars, there's a, a metal gate, and one car got pushed like through the metal gate, which was pretty crazy. Um, so it it started at around 4:30 a.m., and I was awake when it happened, so I saw like the first you know, wave of water come into the apartment. And I was like, well, this seems bad. <laughs> um, and then, so we spend, we spend 45 minutes taking buckets of water and dumping it into the sink. Uh, and like both halves of the sink were full and they were draining as fast as we were dumping water in. Mm. Um, now, well, where was the water going after the sink? What down like, the- who knows? Not yeah, like, not in the floor. <laughs> I'm wondering if it was just ended up coming back in at right, some yeah. point. Like, uh, but after after a bit of that, we we're like, you know, kind of this is lost cause. Yeah, I mean, looking know. at some of these photos, you couldn't have like yeah. stuck through <laughs> that. Like this is a real bad. It's like that scene shit. in uh, Fantasia with the oh right, yeah, yeah, commanding yeah. the broomsticks to clean up for you. Even that, but then they just flood everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at around six or so, we uh, we started periscoping um, because, I mean, what else are you going to do? Right. So we were sitting on the couch, and we periscoped for, like, 30 minutes, and uh, Roberto was there, and uh, we, we had, like, 60 viewers. It was pretty fun. They were like, don't be in the water. You're going to get diseases. <laughs> and uh, turn off your electricity, which we did because That's, why not? Yeah. Um, and then so it flooded from 4.30 to 8.30, Wow. Um, it was quite a while. And then by about 8.30, it had... It was so crazy because when you open up that... When you open up the front door, like a wave of twice the height of of what was inside would f- rush in. And so that was kind of terrifying. But then once the water receded, it was blocked up in the apartment well enough that we opened the door and it started flooding back out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, wow. But then, then we spent from like nine a.m. to to one thirty p.m. Uh, pushing water out of the apartment and sweeping it out. Man, um, yeah. And then I eventually drove over here because I was like, "This sucks." I'm, su- I'm surprised how much you guys actually cleaned it. Like, uh, I know, I know my apartment not near this uh, flooded like a quarter inch in like one small part of the room mm-hmm. and like i knew right away like i don't have to clean this up because i live in an apartment and that is like it's a landlord the, thing one of the benefits yeah right. mm-hmm. but you guys like was it was that more of a were you trying to protect your stuff or like what 
was it just kind of like an automatic like this is so bad that we need to do something about it or yeah it it did seem like this feels like it could go out of control in a way that we got to do something you know yeah um but also there was a lot of like self-preservation i mean luckily we since i was awake we had enough time to put all of our stuff on our bed but i assume you know 4 30 there's going to be a lot of people who are asleep who just wake up in the middle of this which would really suck yeah uh because we didn't we didn't have like people knocking on our doors telling us hey there's a flood uh we didn't hear anybody from the apartment or whatever so and and was it at all like quiet besides the storm like could you you could theoretically understand someone sleeping through this and waking up to like two feet of water Sort of, but you could definitely hear it. So, like, on my Periscope, you, like, the the thing that was most notable about it, the thing that I noticed before I saw any water is you could hear it in the pipes because it was building up and building up in the pipes. And so, like, my tub, you could hear, like, a gurgling noise. Um, and then it <laughs> built up so much that water was getting pushed up into the tub through the pipes. Uh, and then you could also just hear, like, the rush of water not just outside, but like in other apartments and stuff like that. It was pretty crazy. Mm. Wow, that is super crazy. It's weird because like you see pictures of like, they're like, there's this crazy storm happening in New York or whatever, and here's a picture of a car under ice, and you're like, wow, mm. that. I guess that's real. And then it's like, <laughs> no, this happened to Brand right, yeah, City yeah. right yeah. here. <laughs> it's a real person. I'm like, wow, they shouldn't have just lived underwater, like. I don't know like, why don't they would there. do that. I, the, yeah. I'm, I'm a little sad I saw the pictures because then I can't, now I can't fully picture Brant like underwater swimming to the door and like opening <laughs> it and like more water coming in and him like rescuing yeah. a kitten and stabbing like, a shark with a knife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like all that. Uh, now, now I have the actual real, uh, which is still, still horrible, but it's yeah. Like, and also I, there's something strange I noticed about this. So you, you know, whenever there's an emergency, you kind of go into this mode of you have a moment where you where you think, okay, what's important, right? Yeah. You think oh, about yeah. what what should you save, and uh, I've gone through this a couple times. Once when my apartment was on fire, uh, and then also when my apartment was flooded. Basically, all the natural forces coming together to destroy me. You just need an earthquake now. I think. Yeah, basically. You don't have very good luck. I'm gonna um, stay away from you. I think, <laughs> from this point on. But I've noticed that like. I'm, I I can give up most of my stuff, right? Like when the flooding started, I took my backpack and put it on my on my uh, bed, and I was like, "Well, I'm done. All right, <laughs> that was it. Bring it on. Yep." Wow. And then it took a little bit of convincing of my roommate, like, "Oh, you've got your computer on the floor. You should probably put that on your bed. Oh, you've got this over here. You should probably save that." And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's probably a good point." Now, yeah. did it? How how fast did it? take to get to sort of this couple of inches tall like um an hour an hour or so wow. yeah that's uh and then it just kept rising from there was it like coming through the door or like seeping up through the it was almost all the door almost all the door okay interesting. Yeah. and then also like i was i was concerned maybe it was coming through the walls or something and like over by our windows or whatever but hmm. like there wasn't even water up against that wall yeah um, so if you yeah. have water coming out of the walls or through the floor, just want to let everybody know <laughs> that's a bad sign. Yeah. You are dealing with a new magnitude of an emergency. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty much all through well, not, the door. And then it would, it seemed like it was kind of going through some cracks in the wall to get to other rooms as well. The reason uh, I asked was because the, the apartment I lived up when I was living up north, uh, that when it did flood a little bit, it flooded not through any doorway it just flooded it just came up through the carpet mm. and i it just, i think it the building was just poorly constructed so there was a way for it to come in right um and it was like the water drainage went right next to where my apartment unit was mm. and someone like the like maintenance people kept like moving the like drainage thing so it wouldn't go where it was supposed to and instead went in this like ditch and it would just fill up with water, and then multiple times it would flood that area. Again, not super bad, mm. but enough where it was like annoying. Mm. But floods, dog. 
Yeah. What up with that? Oh, Bryce, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you uh a, I'm gonna send you and chat a link to my Periscope. Oh, okay. We can uh, maybe watch a little bit of this. Yeah, sure. Uh, oh shit! We're getting mad flooded, yo. Is that your roommate Look, with you? We got three yeah. people watching, watching us getting flooded. He was a uh, he was not totally sold man. on live streaming it. <laughs> Seven people, until about like people. ten minutes wow. in. He was like, "All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah." I'm into this. How yeah. long did you stream it for? This is, this Twenty is minutes. What the internet was built for something like that. Um, so here eventually, eventually you'll get the uh, the us. Oh, turning off God. the power. Oh, uh, ew, that's disgusting. Oh, it's brown. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. No wonder the, people were worried about diseases. Now I'm yeah. I'm not going to touch yeah. you for the rest it's of the, the day. Uh, right? It's not the best. Yeah, I took a lie. I took a pretty good shower after this. It's not the best um, situation. But yeah, you, so we spent in what, in this stream you can 30, see you can 40, see us turning off the power. You can see at at some point we look outside at the parking lot and you can see like the the bubbling up of the drainage pipe. Did did people tell you to turn off the power or was that something that like occurred to you at no people told us and we're yeah. like all right that's that's not a terrible idea and um, that's when your roommate was like maybe live streaming to get other opinions <laughs> on what we should do right now is the best idea right yeah, yeah um yeah i think right around now uh right around that twelve thirty mark somewhere Spork and Pork says uh, you can escape. you can hear the gurgling of the tub we can go upstairs um, um, my, and then eventually we go. This is like a scene the from The Last Ooh. of Us right now. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. completely dark. You hear like sloshing around and right, like that sewer right. level. Luckily, yeah. I don't have cuts or open wounds. Uh, Michael, do you have cuts? Or I open just wounds? really want Brand's life to be an action movie. <laughs> hey Bryce, you want to you want to cut kind of near the end? Oh, just, sure, sure. just to see outside, because this was right at sunrise, more or less. Mm. Oh, YouTube. Wow. Exciting. That is crazy. Yeah, at least it's a little bit drier up here. That's nice. Are you guys on a first floor apartment? Yes. Okay. Because I was like, that would be really yeah, fucked up if you were on the second floor and it was still getting that high. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd, that'd be way messed up. Uh, yeah, and then if you cut kind of right at the end, there's Are you, uh, Is, is there's your building like. Views. Is that complex a place where it's kind of lower? in general or do you what, think people are getting it worse than this even well i think i mean there's a there's a river not nearby and so i think that's where the bulk of this came from it was just overflow from the river so people who are closer to the river got it worse i'm sure well and, um, and san marcos got uh was like right near where the hurricane touched down like it hmm. like the storm was particularly bad just in that general location yeah uh, so. It, I mean, it almost looks like a, a river in your parking lot. In, in the lot, parking, parking lot, lot, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. I'll say, like, of all things, it was kind of fun. I mean, <laughs> like, you're sick, right? You're sick. Barring the fact, <laughs> barring the fact that like everything's getting destroyed, like it was really exciting. It's something to do. Yeah. yeah. What else are you gonna do? Saturday I mean, night? it's like it's like a good, like a good. Uh, a good film you know you see things that like don't normally happen and you're like oh wow like that's a really interesting way to see something and then like oh wow there's a ton of water flooding into our apartment how often do you see that that's kind of cool now you have the experience now you're stronger yeah now you can take on just the builds character when comes. yeah what when did this fire thing happen i feel like i vaguely remember you mentioning this. oh this happened beginning of 2013 same uh, apartment complex same complex, different building, uh, different roommates. I was living with my crazy, horrible roommates, and uh, one uh, of them. Now I remember. Yeah. Yeah, one of them left on the stove, That's and went to sleep, mm. and it was a pretty sizable fire. So that wasn't a natural disaster. No, it was a lot dumber. Man-made. That was yeah. a man-made disaster. I had, I had a roommate who did a really similar thing, where he thought the knobs clicked all the way around. <laughs> So and, just like, and so instead of turning it off, he had set it to like ultra maximum. high broil. Mm -hmm. So you could just Ooh. smell, you could just smell the heat of the oven throughout the this dorm room. Uh, and I'd be like, hey, you know that you actually didn't turn it off. I don't know if you have like a nose. Mm. It's pretty bad. Uh, I fire hazard. 
I don't know if Brant was working for Brian already when this happened, but Brian's dog came up on the stove once and turned it on for and really? it started a fire. Yeah. I feel like oh, I remember shit. hearing yeah, about I, that. Yeah, I'm sure he talked about it. Um, yeah. But and then there was like that great story where Josie just goes, Dad, hot <laughs> And then he put out the fire. That's great. But he was napping too when that happened, but I guess something went off. Mm. All right. So uh Bryce, you you mentioned you maybe wanted to uh, kind of do an overview of what's been going on in the month of May. Yeah, I figured that'd be a good uh catalyst for just talking about uh, stuff. Stuff, right? Uh we stuff. only do it once a month, so it's like, you know, yeah. pretty pretty good reason to. Uh I think where we last left off uh was uh, uh oh oh Brian had just gotten on the cover of Magic Magazine. Ah, so. uh, yes. So it was right camp. before that behind the scam. Right. Like two days. Uh, we had uh, the, the uh, as far as scam schools go, we had uh, the uh, cosmic number and crosswords uh, puzzle, uh, mm -hmm. escaping double locked handcuffs. Right. Uh, a The business card mind reading uh, mm -hmm. tool. And then uh, that was actually like three weeks or just the way, I guess the way it timed out. Maybe it wasn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that, that, Double locked handcuff one was tough. That that whole shoot was like blown out on the master shot. Yeah. Um, because we had like really uh, scattered clouding. Um, yeah, it kept coming in and out, mm -hmm. uh, which was like a, an issue with the the cosmic number one as well. It was just mm -hmm. like, man, I gotta just keep. They're, like at some point, there isn't so much that you can do because it's it's the lighting is changing so quickly. Yeah. I mean that's that's the kind of thing where if we had the the resources for it, if we didn't try to have like a really light crew or whatever, we could have somebody that's holding like a giant diffusion panel or something for the entire episode. But mm -hmm. it's it's hard to be like, hey, person who decided to come hang out with us just for fun, why don't you work Hold this, this thing entire episode over your arms? Yeah, for forty five minutes. It would look really nice if they did it though. Yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, we, there's also uh, this is the the business card mind reading. That's our first episode from this last batch of handlebar shoots. Hmm. Uh, and that that was a uh, that was a, so there was a weird thing with this with this episode. It wasn't like a weird thing, but uh, at the at the end, you know, Brian showed them. He 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 finishes off the trick here, right? All right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they see the card. And uh, it says, you know, you will say stop just before this card. Yeah. And uh, they, you know, they, they were real nice guys, but they mm -hmm. they were a little nonplussed mm -hmm. about it. They were mm -hmm. they had a very muted sort of reaction. As and and to be noted, that's usually a guy thing. Mm -hmm. Is the they had uh, brand the face. reaction? One of the great reasons to have girls on the episodes is because their reactions are typically bigger to a magic effect, mm -hmm. versus the guys who are like, cool, bro. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I mean, I think I think the first because I think I think we actually did a pickup of reactions on that, which we yeah. don't do very often. Uh, and uh, they were just like in the original, they were just like, oh, yeah. oh wow, hey. Uh, so uh, uh, I was tasked with judging this this moment up a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, and so <laughs> we we put in a, a, little, yeah. a little like. I, I, I just wanted to put like an explosion mm -hmm. or something. Uh, and when I sent the cut to Brian, Brian's was like, no, no, let's let's take it way over the top and yeah. just do. Pe at some point it was just let's just do Peggle. So essentially you're at like, 900. Uh, I need you at 9000. Yeah. So we've got explosions, like rainbows, Maybe. the Statue of That's Liberty, uh, oh, the Statue of David comes me. up. And this was this was the pretty good sports ball ad, right? Yeah, the. Uh, um, oh man. Have you uploaded this to BBPedia videos? No, I'm I'm so behind on uploading my ads to BBPedia. Should. I should. I uh, should. This was just funny because, it, it again, this was another idea where it was like, uh, I wanted to do just a real quick, simple, almost one shot sort of thing, where we did <laughs> fake, where we would fake him, making a a, a trick shot, some weird trick shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, you know, talking with Brian, that's the one thing about doing the ads with Brian that's kind of nice is that uh, I can bounce ideas off of him and help refine stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so we ended up just like spending 45 minutes at this basketball hoop, 
which was next to an open dumpster. Yeah. Um, while Brian was wearing his his daughter's <laughs> soccer jersey, which still does like I, this is not to say that Brian is not a fit dude. I I find it very hard to believe he, he his child's well, soccer jersey would the, fit. The jersey is big on her, from what I understand as well. Ah. Mm. Is part of is, it, is part of the funniness of it. I mean, it, you can see it in the video. It fits him like. I, the, the sleeves are a little short, but the fit is like pretty decent. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and and <laughs> after she saw the ad, uh, Penny was like, "Hey, I saw the ad." Uh, well, and this is me bracing her her quote up, but uh, she's like, "So so, uh, Dad was in in the dumpster wearing my jersey, huh?" Oh, I don't really want to wear that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, so we ended up. So that was that was the one thing because I I've been I think almost all my ads all my ads so far have had Brian in them, uh, and it's been nice to sort of get his insight and and just like kind of collaborate on ideas for ads, because mm. uh, you know my I I don't have the track record yet that you do, Brant. Gotcha. Uh, and so you know it, it's nice to have that extra creative push. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, was my Jarf Biz ad this month? Uh, I think I, so. I, I, I have like so. no concept of time or scale. Yeah, that place, was on the double so. lock handcuffs where you did your. Um, yeah. Learn how to a bit of that. Jarf Biz initiate. Initiation process engaged. Come on, Jarf Biz. So this is fun because this was ever, this is the first time that I used Mocha initiate. for tracking. Oh yeah yeah. Um. Which is like what you're supposed to use if you want to track in After Effects, mm -hmm. um, but I never, I never really played with it before, um, and so this is my first time, and it came out pretty good. It's yeah, it was a real solid track, especially with this. You've got a shot at the Oculus. end with you're wearing yeah. an image of an Oculus Rift. Yeah, uh, and it looks like if you like weren't totally looking like like it, there's a couple like it looks really good. It's tracked really really well. Yeah, there are definitely some people who thought that I just had an Oculus Rift. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and this ad is packed with a bunch of like little like jokes, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it's got fake names of uh, superheroes: uh, Thorn and Hunk and Hawk Guy, uh, Black Blank Window. Caption Ameridog. Caption Ameridog, right? Um. Yeah, and this is this is. This wasn't a bunt, but it was absolutely a what can I do? It's four in the morning mm. on Wednesday. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm going to go into my closet and I'm going to shoot this thing that's just my face. And then there you go. Mm. And then that was definitely an all nighter um, because, you know, anytime you do those kind of motion graphics things, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a while to get it to look right. And then once you get it to look right, it takes forever to render. Yeah. Um, and right. and and that's assuming that it tracks well, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you have a something where you have to like hand make a track or a mask or something, done that. Uh, just frame by frame. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, the other one. Oh, the other one we had was this uh, cosmic. Oh yeah, I guess. Number. Oh yeah. Uh, and and we had an uh this starry was it? What did I call it? Our night sky is dense Eyes on with constellations. What? Thousands Seeing stars. Years ago, they Seeing represent stars. some of humanity's most well-known uh, stories. And this was pretty close. This was pretty close to the idea. The world of this is pretty close to the idea that I sent to Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's Brian, uh, if you follow Brian on Twitter, uh, you know that around this time he had a. He tweeted out another video. Of, uh, of of the Star Hustler, yes, uh, which is uh, a, a, a PBS. It was a PBS video or video series um, that I had not known of, but but the the sort of col like the the the, uh, the those two ideas worked pretty well together. Hmm. I thought, uh, yeah, yeah, and it was sort it was another sort of simple. That was a real simple ad, um, but I hmm. I wasn't so much that I was. For time, it was just I wanted to do that constellations joke of just like here's a line and it it, it yeah. depicts a big 
fucking battle or something. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that was pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, we started up doing the giveaways, right? right. We Over gave away um, with with the the quiz things, mm-hmm. which now we can bring John into the mix because this is kind <laughs> of a uh, scam stuff sort of deal. Yeah, like, hey. it is true. But I mean, it's it's pretty easy to explain my bit of that <laughs> part. So, yeah, bunch of people sign up to be a winner, and then I use a random number generator, mm-hmm. pick yeah. the winner, and ship them their thing. <laughs> so, nice. <laughs> then I'm done. Yeah. Uh, so, from, John, how do you decide what we're gonna give away? Uh, Brian usually decides that. He usually um, decides right around when we start recording. He oh, goes, okay. Oh, well, what should we give away? We Add we've talked books. we've talked before about things that would be good to give away and different reasons to give certain things away. So that's probably all running in his mind when he makes that decision. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it's not it's not a complicated. It's not a pro. It's not a big thing. Is what you're saying, right? Yeah, like especially just, when you know you're just giving a one off away or something like that. Or yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this is a kind of modeled after the king of random. He does he does a lot of stuff like this where it's like here's a quiz, mm. and it points to video or points to links of stuff and all that. And from like some of the numbers that I saw, it seemed like there's a lot of people uh, signing up for this giveaway. Yeah, yeah, a a good number of people. Mm. Not enough to discourage anyone from from trying. Oh sure, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, no. That's not, yeah, oh, no, no, that's, no, forget, no, <laughs> yeah. like, it's like 12 guys, you got a pretty good chance. Just get a couple of different email addresses. So, so kind of, is, is it kind of comparable to what Brian would be able to get from, like, touring? Because that used to be a big thing, like, he would, he would give away uh, some books or whatever at the sure, end of his show. Sure, for, for uh, email stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. It is higher than that for sure, I mean. Okay. Touring, yeah, I mean, would... you're you're reaching a much, much, much larger audience for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but there's probably a slightly smaller turnover rate. The other thing is, you know, uh, yeah, for for um, the tour, it would be people like write, the, you know, they're writing it handwritten. Oh, I still have a you, bunch of those pages. Yeah, and you can't <laughs> even decipher half of them. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but it, the, yeah, I mean, especially the King of Random, I, I think the King of Random, like, br- talked, Brian and him talked, and that's mm-hmm. uh, him, that's kind of kicked him off to do giveaways and things like this. Like, the uh, the multiple choice sort of deal with the Rogue's Wallet giveaway this month mm-hmm. uh, is like a King of Random, like, big thing. Yeah, they've been... From from what I can tell, they've been pretty friendly ever since the uh, collaboration video, which did really well for us and them, I believe. Mm. Um, but also, this is a little bit of an extension of an ad idea that I had like a billion years ago that we just never oh, got around to. That's right, the mega ad. Yeah, we're gonna. So originally, we we thought we were going to have a domain spot that was gonna uh, be like an extra big deal and it was going to be like a long ad and we'd get paid more for it but that just kind of fell through Mm. Uh, and so one of the ideas I was really pumped about was doing like a multi-branching ad that was like a choose your own adventure story kind of situation but we just we just never got around to it and it was going to be a bit more work and you know half the stuff I do is so last minute that it just it just didn't happen Mm -hmm. yeah I, I saw a look at that doc and there's a pretty wide range of, of ideas right? Yeah. Uh, for for how that thing would have gone with the different choices. And maybe one day we'll get around to actually shooting it, but... Yeah, something like it, maybe. Yeah. Um, so that's that's pretty much the video. And then we had uh, Scam School remixes come up. Uh, sure. <laughs> we just had one of Chad go out today where everyone's like, oh my god, it's Chad! <laughs> Which is exactly why it chose that episode for a remix. <laughs> because I was like, get on this Chad hype. Mm-mm. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I think I think it's a great uh, thumbnail of just like it's pretty good. Yeah. Did Brian tell you that story that like someone um, uh, wrote him was like, no, that's OMG Chad. Like, do you know who that is? Great, or like yeah. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of this funny thing. Great. 
Uh, and so maybe you want to switch over to scam stuff? Yeah. Things that have happened in the past month? Uh, I mean, speaking most recently... Uh, card throwing? Would have been card throwing. Yeah. How did that idea come up? Bow. I know we've we've had them like had <laughs> so them in stock for a little while or not in stock but like around. Yeah, this is a funny um man, this those throwing card kits have, those were originally gonna come out the just the banshees were gonna come out in um January. Mm-hmm. And uh it was that and Octopalm we were looking at both of those. That's right. And uh, uh yeah. but we decided that that um in both instances, uh, those products were more compelling if they included more things that you could use them with. And so for the Octopalm, we made that dexterity kit. And so you get a deck of cards that you can use uh, as well as some dice and some other things to do tricks with. Also uh, the goo gone. Um, the goo gone to get it off of your fingers. Yeah. And so that made a much more compelling, you know, it, it gave you everything you need instead of watching the video when you get the Octopalm and saying, oh, well, now I need to get dice. Now I need to get this to do all the things. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing with the Banshees. Um, if you just got the Banshees, sure, you would have cards to throw around, which is fun. But what all of the card throwing episodes uh, feature, you know, it kind of impaling against a particular, you know, this kind of foam board mm -hmm. and so we uh we experimented with that and then we ended up coming up with these targets and um kind of hand making all these uh they look pretty slick yeah so yeah. thank you well we have a bunch of them uh and we're kind of trying to move them out it, it's funny we switched over to a fulfillment center uh late last year in time for the holidays but this particular thing is so big i mean if you order this, no one's going to be like, I'm it's so big. excited for the people who are ordering this. Cause when it shows up, like you feel like you got something like it's heavy, mm -hmm. it's big. It's uh, my favorite part of it is I went to the post office just to, I was in disbelief of hitting the shipping tier. Right. But like I brought it to the post office and apparently if it was a square inch bigger, it would have cost like quadruple the cost to <laughs> ship it out. So like we like really dodged the bullet on, on how expensive it is to ship this, but it it's still costly because it, it's a it's a big thing and it's 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 uh, like two heavy. by two, right? Two feet, by yeah, two, two feet. foot by two foot. Mm. Uh, and anyway, so so then we, I spray painted all those uh, the uh, targets on there. Mm. Uh, thanks to Bryce for oh wait, it was a Bryce or Brant who? Oh which yeah, one of you I ended up, up doing the targets. The, okay, you yeah. finalized that target design, um, and the. Uh, kind of cool i won't say what it's for yet but the the center of that target you'll see that logo come up somewhere else it's a little clover uh, we actually we actually there's another product that features that um and then we kind of last minute put it on here too it's supposed to be a kind of rendition of the bbs you see the mm -hmm. yeah you can um, it, like if you're just listening it's like it's like four kind of like if you look at like you like know the the square logo yeah it looks a little like the square it's like four squares but not the fourth <laughs> row. Uh, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so so we uh, we had these sitting around forever, and then slowly, uh, and you know, Brian's been experimenting with what the best thing to throw cards into is for years, and then it was really the past couple months too that we, you know, we had the materials, and it was in terms of it took a while to figure out what presentation we wanted, and then it took even longer to decide if we were going to ship everything over to Atlanta first uh, or what we ended up doing is just shipping it directly from here uh, to lower the cost of shipping as well. But oh, wow. So they're not even, ha they're not even no, handling no, it. No, it would York. cost, it would cost uh, just about, it would probably double the shipping cost for us to move it over there. Uh, and for most things, that's not the case. Um, wow. So uh, some other stuff that came out, uh, Escape from Handcuffs kit. Yeah, yeah, that is uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. You get that's a, one of my favorites recently. Um, just I don't know if you guys had any chance to actually uh, like use that clear cuff, but mm -hmm. shimming it is awesome. Like hmm. like um, yeah, you get you get a handcuff where uh, the the mechanism has got a, a piece of clear plastic on one side, so you can actually see what you're doing. When... It's like a vertical slice. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting, um, especially with um, the paperclip is a little harder to do than the shim, but it's it's interesting because um, when I was testing this out to see how it worked, mm -hmm. how you would imagine like using a paperclip to, you know, bust open some handcuffs without the key is not how you would think to actually play around with it. So that clear that clearness of the cuff there really helps build that understanding. And I know mm -hmm. they covered a, a bunch in scam school and I was familiar with how it worked, but it really wasn't until I had it in front of me. Um, and that's why like, I, I'm pretty excited about all the products that we release, but that moment of uh, actually playing around with that one, it, it, that's one of my favorites in, in kind of recent uh, mm -hmm. memory but yeah. yeah and that's what that handcuffs episode of scam school was about was was how to use paper clips and uh gator clips yeah well they talk about the double lock too which i guess they didn't feature before but those um right all the ones we include you can double lock it to practice that as well but cool uh also whiskey bullets that whiskey came bullets. out at yeah, the same time yeah, as that, the, that's as the an, cuffs that was one i was you know i was worried that no one would want that and uh it it definitely passed my expectations on on interest a lot of people get them for dads and stuff like that so we'll probably oh, yeah. do another little thing around father's day um smart but uh they're nice uh and they're, they're they like I, I held them when we had them here i mean they they feel good and I, I feel like these sorts of like uh reusable cooler cubes because they're not ice uh, are like surprisingly popular. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it's it's. I guess it's because the um, uh, yeah, if you use ice, it dilutes the drink and mm -hmm. add. You know, you don't uh, want that uh, generally. And it's not badass. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, drinking. Yeah, the, the guys bullets. who came up with this too are really easy and and cool and fun to work with. Nice. Um, so that's always a plus too. It's not a not an extra headache to get to work that stuff out so uh so i want to i want to bring up this one thing uh looking at the tactical card throwing kit. okay uh and this uh -oh. is this is directed at you bryce god damn it and this is <laughs> oop, this is oop. not a shaming thing okay but shame him i think this is a funny thing that happened okay that we have not really publicly talked about Okay. So the first time you did uh, photography for scam <laughs> stuff, uh, there was there was like six to eight products that we needed photographs for. It was the Octopalm. Uh, yeah. Some of this early Banshee stuff that we didn't end up using. Yeah, there was, there was like a stretch of a few products that we needed kind of all at once. And I was unable to do it. I was like busy working or something yeah. in San Marcos. And so you were like, I'll do it. And then... <laughs> So you came down, and we worked out a thing of like, oh, you'll take the photos, I'll edit the photos. Easy enough. Sure. Couldn't be simpler. <laughs> oh, my God. And then uh, I, I wait around a little while, and Bryce sends me a text. He's like, hey, so all the photos are up on our usual place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I open it up, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's a lot of photos. Oh, wow, there's another folder. Oh, that's a lot of photos. There were like mm -hmm. eight hundred photos. There, yeah, and there videos. was a lot. There was a lot, and I was just like, "What is, what is he doing?" So <laughs> I, I have to imagine, mm -hmm. best of intentions, you went into it saying, "I want to give you so much footage, like mm -hmm. you have, like that you're gonna get covered because we had a yeah. lot of product and sure. we needed specific shots for everything. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure we had we had good we had good shots, we had good safeties." Mm -hmm. Uh, there was a, there was a lot of burst I, I, I that a uh, burst photography that a lot of which did not even pan out very much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to cover the base. Well, the first sure. thing is funny to me because it's like they're like still products. Like they're not going well, anywhere. They're well, not like oh, you missed us. <laughs> right, well, uh, but... we I, like I did I did a burst thing for trying to like uh, suspend 
the uh, oh gotcha okay yeah trying to make it look a little so there more were action. there were reasons there were for reasons the for some okay. of the birds. for some of them some of, <laughs> some of them there was not there was just no excuse some were That's like awesome. I'm just gonna rack focus and burst while I do it so that way hey, you be, have be all be the careful focuses. though because the the opposite problem is way worse than the uh, well being on the safe side the wonder I'm just saying <laughs> for so, usually I go into a product eight hundred come was out a lot. I, 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 yeah. I got it eight hundred was a lot and we didn't use we didn't get 800 for uh for the the banshee kit yeah it, so, it was a good number so usually i end up walking away with 10 to 15 photos for a product at most okay and then we usually publish like four to six mm. but with card throwing kit improvements good Going towards improvement, absolutely. Look, I definitely publish Some all of them, though. I, I mean, that's like, the thing that kind of surprised me. I didn't expect that you. I would put them all, all there. Of them. <laughs> John, <laughs> John picks them up later, but John usually does that, so you kind of have to be careful with what you give well, John. Our uh, Shopify theme here, if uh, if you go and go look at it, if you're, uh, I never know how to cater to the audio people. Sure. But um, or go back, go it's back to where it was, mm -hmm. like. The the way our theme works and displaying those images isn't the greatest that's weird. because. Yeah. Yeah, and so I I ended up deleting some to kind of get it in that squarish block. But when you have different photos of different sizes, it's not really friendly to it, mm. uh, unfortunately. But but whatever. Um, that this the theme is really good for with what we want to do on the store. But mm. I'm hoping to change it one of these days because we've had it for a while too. Yeah. yeah, this is what it's been since it launched, right? Or I no, guess that was not, well. That was no. the first. This is the second. Uh, kind of I guess visual style that scam stuff had the yeah, first one was awful and then Brant got hired and we had a like a weekend or so that we kind of went back through yeah and you guys yeah, I remember very specifically when you guys decided to redesign this because I was tasked with basically reshooting and reshooting creating assets everything. for everything <laughs> during the week that my mom was visiting and I was oh. like, Hey, I'm visiting my mom. Like I'm not going to be able to I'm do so stuff. Sorry about this brand, but I didn't, I didn't use like the specific terminology of vacation. So Brian was like, well, you're just working from not at home. And I was like, not really, but it, it was, it was a whole communication thing. And so, well, that stuff's hard. Cause I guess, this would still be early on and when you were working with us too. Mm -hmm. And so like that stuff's always hard. Even even now after I've been working for a while, it's it's hard to uh you know, just be like, Look, I need this time right, not yeah. doing stuff. Especially early on when you're like, I'm trying to prove that I can work for you. Yeah, and we we're also um, doing like extra credit at the time and yeah, all kinds yeah, of stuff. There's always a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, one of the other products that came out over the past month was Sonic Nausea. I think that was just that that was not long after we did mm. uh, last month's episode. Yeah, that must have been like right on the cusp. Yeah, that's uh, a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> I I edited together this the the product video for this, mm -hmm. uh, and you can kind of get uh, a listen to some of the sound. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> not good at all. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's, it's bad. It's, it's, it's bad. bad, but it's not like um, the f the funny thing is, like people were complaining about it in the video. But if you're in person, like that thing is way worse. Uh, and it covers and some then, distance too. And then it was yeah. funny too because none of us wanted to put it together to like take the photos. <laughs> so like uh, when Brent gave me the photos, I was like, wait, but it's not even assembled. But I was like, well, I never assembled it either, like during anything. <laughs> and then when I, I had to, like I took that photo there, yeah. and it was awful like trying to get everything right and then like you mm -hmm. know do the shot so and also so it's about I, half and half here of connected and disconnected i was i was taking all those shots at like 11 p.m here when all the kids were asleep yeah and no. all that stuff. oh so yeah i was like there's, there's no way yeah yeah and then it was i tried to get it in a way where you could where it was not it was removed but connected to the battery but that mm -hmm. didn't work either mm. uh and so I, I endured it. I don't know if I can hear the upper range of my hearing anymore, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I but certainly it was fun. I certainly had a trip putting this video piece together. Yeah, I don't envy yeah. that. Uh, That's way worse because constantly need to listen to it. Yeah, because you have to. You should have just put like a, a a low pass filter on it when you're editing it. God damn it. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> really. 
Next time. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Sonic Nausea 2. <laughs> uh, but it was the kind of thing where it was like, I just kept hearing it. And it lingers. It, it lingers for a while. And yeah. um, I'm sure at l- I think the, the neighbor above me and the neighbor beside oh. me have children. <laughs> and I like to work late in the evening. Sure. Uh, so that... I don't think I've made any friends in the apartment complex that, mm. that that day. That day. No headphones. No, you don't mix on headphones. What? Especially with this thing with with the the noise. I don't want that right on my eardrum. <laughs> I'd blow it out. I I listen too loud on headphones. Mm. Uh, and then we had the, this lock picket. Uh, was trainer. that really that that was in March? I think was it. But we we definitely haven't talked about it. I mean that's yeah. that's another recent favorite of mine. Uh, again, for a similar reason, when I first did it, and I had never actually picked a lock before, mm. and so when I also these are not these photos don't don't judge them too hard. I took all these photos, <laughs> and they're like trying to be Brant photos, and they're just not. <laughs> they're nice. We should they're get nice you to photos. retake them someday, probably. But um, the only problem uh, I have with those photos are the colors. Yeah, well, I, 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 just I think used, the, I think the I framing used the is pretty Shopify, decent. I use the Shopify. Um, Oh, do they have an auto? They have a thing? filter that you can throw, like mm-hmm. Instagram style. And right. I was just like, uh, I'm just going to throw get these up. on because it, it looked the colors were even the colors were worse than that too. Gotcha. So, gotcha. but um, yeah, there's another one like that. The lucky dice are also like that, where it's just like a mm-hmm. Shopify filter. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, like getting that first time lock pick for real when I got the sample unit in, and I was like, oh, this is great. We like we have to order a ton of them, and then. I ordered what I thought was a lot, and and people just really want to learn that skill, I guess. And we were um, luckily the, the the people who supply them to us are uh, very close to our fulfillment center, so we were able to get them all in and get them shipped out. But oh, that's good. Hmm. Yeah, I I feel like that is like a, a constant thing of kind of what you have to do, John, is like read what people might want, maybe. Uh, when you know you're selecting, you know this product. Uh, I mean, do, do you have any sort of insight, or like, how do you, how do you gauge what you think the reaction to these things will be? Do you have any? So, uh, good question. It's a mix. Um, so we'll I'll go through and just look up stuff that's kind of magicy or that's cool or. You know, we have like bottle loft or drop catch is kind of drinking related or the whiskey bullets. Mm-hmm. And so those are kind of my category of things. I'll run through and look at stuff. Or uh, for example, with the arson watch, it, I just, it was like fire related and we do a lot of fire stuff and it was kind of funny. And the Apple watch was also kind of a hot thing at the time. Yeah. Uh, and so putting that all together made sense. But a lot of it is guessing. And then um, a lot of it's like, how we how brian and i think it is so like the arson watch we ended up ordering a lot of because we, we knew it was going to be a lower price and it was kind of that thing where it was like ah, i just buy that for you know 15 bucks and uh play around with it and uh but um it's it's also a lot based on like how soon we can get things so like if something takes longer for us to get mm. we'll order more of them that sort of thing um but in terms of deciding which products to put up uh, we we do a lot of experimenting, just kind of releasing it and seeing how it does. Uh, but w- you know, we don't go with everything. Like I'll I'll run it by Brian, and we'll kind of talk through it and decide if it's something that that seems worthwhile. Um, but uh, like or going past you know on on past history of stuff. So like the bump key's doing well would prompted you know looking at the lockpick trainer and then those doing well is prompting some future things too um so like for example uh we used to have padlock shims on the site uh and those were doing well but uh they weren't the best quality ones so we're actually moving to a better quality of those that'll be released in the future so Mm -hmm. uh so that was something that you know the padlock shims it was like "Ah, i don't we'll just have it to have it because it's something that people you know, might be interested in since we cover it a lot. But when the interest was higher for it, that prompted us to say, oh, well, you know, maybe let's get a better version of this in. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So a lot of like finding related items and like you were talking about sort of categorizing them a little bit. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is knowing kind of the audience too. So like all those lockpicking episodes do really well in terms of views and comments and likes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's, you know, way back when we first had the skeleton keys, that was probably what prompted, you know, doing those in the first place. So, you know, a lot of it is like, well, what do we think will sell well based on, you know, what videos do well? And then other things, you know, like drop catch or bottle loft is, oh, this is a thing that is cool and people might like either as a gift or or they might like it for themselves. We'll just put it up and see how it does. And, you know, if it does well, then then we order more. If it doesn't, then we don't order more and just let it kind of sell out. So mm -hmm. that's kind that's of our approach to it. It's, it's kind of simple when you step back and it's, well, let's try it. It didn't mm -hmm. work. Stop buying it. It yeah. does work. Buy more of it. So it all seems like dark magic to me. I don't dark know. Magic. I yeah, just, I'm like, whoo boy. Yeah, we like... sacrifice a goat, and then <laughs> we decide. You know, if the blood runs to the north side, then we order. You know, a hundred extra units. Mm -hmm. Now it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I thought you know, and I thought you just spilled some Kool Aid. No, on the sidewalk, but. Uh, okay, so that's that's uh, a pretty good uh, look back at the past month. Yeah, uh, I was. I, th I feel like that was a pretty successful segment. Yeah. Cut myself in the battle. Good job, Bryce. Thank you. Thank you. Good suggestion. <laughs> uh, so we've got a. Uh, I'd say we probably about five or five, maybe ten ish minutes before we got to get off record. Killers. Um, any other interesting stories of, of the past month or so? Um, well, so I had some topics, but I'll save those for next time because okay. we don't have time for them. Uh, but Spark and Fork had a question for us That's over right. Twitter. Um, and they asked, how do your different personality types and habits affect your working relationship? <laughs> hmm. So. Did you guys, I know you took the uh, Myers-Briggs thing. I did. Because yeah. Brian and Bonnie, I took that as well. I I guessed your complete thing correctly. Yeah, yeah. By really? the way, yeah, I was really proud it's of myself. Good. I know you. <laughs> uh, I haven't done a Myers Briggs in like probably since, I mean, in a really long time, so it might not even be accurate. Um, uh, I I think I mentioned this in chat uh, one night. That was like I uh, I think I'm INTJ, but I also feel like there's I I don't know. I feel like there might be like a stigma on that. Like some people like people will just say they're that because that's like a nice or that's like a certain type of i don't know i i don't know my uh but as far as like getting along like i i feel like there hasn't been any sort of personality clash uh in fact i think we kind of complement each other just a little bit right hmm. uh am i alone on that yeah we we all secretly hate you oh, race I, uh, no i mean yeah, I, I don't I don't know what my letters were, but I was at the top right box. I don't I don't know what that was. Um, yeah, I like I have a hard time connecting with people, so it it takes some time to get to get like open up to people. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I've been I've been dealing with Brian for long enough that I that I can I can talk to him or whatever. But uh, I'm I'm pretty seclusive. Reclusive, 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 um, and like, I think that definitely plays into it because I, I don't, I don't talk to people unless I really have to, mm -hmm. uh, and I kind of, I kind of work off on my own, and I think that, I think that affects stuff. Yeah, we, we, but, like, working together is like a couple of hours mm -hmm. a month, right? It's like mm -hmm. during shoots, uh, if we're doing product videos, you know, we'll work a little with John and Brian but a lot of it is just kind of like plugging away at a computer back home mm -hmm. so uh, even if our personality types didn't really work well together uh, I think there wouldn't be as you much you wouldn't have to deal with it constantly yeah unlike a lot of other other types of situations might be yeah. yeah and also I think like I'm I can be kind of, uh, uh, I try to cut through the bullshit a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I like when, um, 
I won't say who this was, but we dealt with a person at one point in time, John will remember, and I was dealing with emails. And at a certain point, I just got so frustrated with this guy because I was, I was trying to like put up the facade of like, yeah, we can, we can work together and I'll, I'll whatever. Uh, and I had to hand it off because I was just like, if I deal with this guy anymore, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like, Lose I'm, I'm going. I'm going to ruin this <laughs> working relationship, um, and maybe you see a little bit of that in like scam school comments where I'm, I'm fairly flippant, but like I don't really care about some of those people, uh-huh. you know. Um, we could spend a whole episode on you trying to figure out what yeah. you were referring to, but I also don't want to. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, it, it was back early on. Um, that was like a, one of the first products. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'm sure that affects things. You know, I'm, I'm not really our PR guy uh, because of stuff like that. But Brian, you, you Brian's know, the, pretty good. The at trick like with those is with uh, the trick with those is you you also have to make them believe that you might order like like we wanted to get their lowest quantity of Mm -hmm. items for that particular thing Mm -hmm. and more recently i needed to order a lot more than their minimum quantity of items and it was like night and day difference on in terms of like so you know you don't have to lie to them but like if they get the idea that you might be someone who's you know worth dealing with yeah because i know early on it was i was like well what's the least we can do on every it was like well you know what are the asking like the different tiers so like mm-hmm. if i you know well, the what's price, your minimum what's breaks. your maximum like if i'm interested in this much how much it would cost and then go a few extra higher mm-hmm. um and then see what they say but yeah anyway i i mean i i would say that kind of like on the noseness is nice like i think it's a little refreshing hmm. uh just because like like sometimes i'll do uh, the bookings for scam school right and you have to be really like not codified in your language but you know it's a relationship and you have to uh, 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 say things not not even a certain way you just have to like you know we're a small crew and we don't have a lot of stuff and yeah. so yeah. like it's it's kind of nice that like if I'm taking too many photos, you will tell me I'm taking too many photos. Sure, sure. You know, I, I, I try to, I, I do think it's really fun to be like a super direct person mm-hmm. because there, there, you can definitely tell there's sometimes where there are like social situations where you can, you can feel that you're expected to react a certain way, even if that's not how you actually feel. And then if you, if you react how you actually feel, it's just fun to watch how people react. And they're like, wait, what? 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 <laughs> what? Um, okay, so I think that's it. I think we're bumping up against Quid Killers. Yeah. Uh, uh, John, are you still on your Twitter hiatus? I am. Is Star Until Wars out yet? December. No. Th- You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, everybody go to scamstuff.com and buy a lot of stuff. Sure. Yeah. Um, Brant? Yo. What's up? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Yeah. At Gatawag, G A T O W A G. Yeah. I'm usually pretty responsive over there, as long as I'm not getting flooded. Yeah. And even then. Well, like, <laughs> yeah, flooded on what Twitter else is there or to flooded, do? like, yeah. in real life? Both. Both? Okay. Both. Yeah. Solid rule. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brycas, B R Y C A S. Uh, you can get to this show by going to ll dd.co slash tbb, all lowercase. We will get a domain at some point. Uh, but we are on iTunes. Uh, we can, we will get on Stitcher. Um, all the, all the good stuff. Uh, you can go there and subscribe. And um, until next time, did we, did we ever come up with a new outro either? No. <laughs> Join us next time when I say something that makes John feel really uncomfortable, and then he tries to make a sensible point about it. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>